the MCAT Podcast, session number 162. A collaboration between the medical school headquarters and Next Step Test Prep, the MCAT Podcast is here to make sure you have the information you need to succeed on your MCAT test day. We all know that the MCAT is one of the biggest hurdles you'll face as a pre-med, and we're here to give you the motivation and information that you need to know to help get you the score you deserve so you can one day call yourself a physician. If you are looking for some more help with your MCAT, go check out nextsteptestprep.com and check out their MCAT course. Their MCAT course is something I reviewed in depth at mcatcoursereview.com. It's a good YouTube video all about MCAT course from Next Step Test Prep. And of course, our new host here on the MCAT podcast is Phil, who runs office hours four days a week for the course. So go check it out, nextsteptestprep.com and use the promo code MCATPOD to save some money on the course. Let's get back in with another great episode with Phil talking about how to really stay motivated while you are going through the MCAT prep process. Phil, back for some more MCAT podcast. How are you today? Good, having a good day. Yeah, exciting, exciting day in the MCAT test prep world. Let's talk about motivation with the MCAT. I know that a very common question that I get, and I, I like literally, as we're recording this, either yesterday or today, someone asked me, like, how do I stay motivated through MCAT prep? How do I not burn out? And it's such a common question. And yet no one has cracked that nut, right? It's, it's, it's just, it's a problem. It's mm-hmm. something that uh, we, as I think human psychology is, is changing around our ability to sit and focus for so long. When you throw this huge test in front of someone, a, a test that matters so much to their future career, to, to what people um, for right or, or wrong kind of identify themselves as, mm-hmm. you throw this huge test that they have to study usually multiple months for, and by the end, they're frustrated, burnt out, and, and just don't want to continue anymore. So let's talk about students in that situation and potentially what they can do to set themselves up for success so they don't hit that uh, that wall. And potentially for those students who are hitting that wall, what can they be doing to to overcome and, and succeed? Yeah. Yeah. And like you were kind of talking about, I just like super common, the fact that motivation, like students run out, it, you're working for, for months on this. And, and I think this is one of the key things is students aren't doing that up until they hit the MCAT. Um, there's no, you know, there's, there's classes that you're in, but you have like a quiz on Friday. I have to study for my quiz on Friday. Right. Or an exam, you know, next week. And so I need to study for the exam next week. It's very rare that somebody is studying this weekend for an exam that they're going to be taking in three months. Yeah. Right. If, if you're an undergrad, like that doesn't really happen. Yep. Um, and so the rules change. And so all of a sudden you're trying to figure out how to, how to kind of deal with this new scenario, this new kind of monster of an exam. Um, and it, it takes some kind of like understanding a little bit of like the neuro and the, like the human psyche. Um, and this is, I think, one of the biggest problems when students are dealing with the MCAT is just how do I keep plugging along? Um, so I recently uh, did a drive out actually towards you. Um, you're out in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in Missouri. And so I was driving through Kansas, which, as you know, is probably the most exciting state of all to drive <laughs> through. Um, have you ever actually ever driven through Kansas? I have multiple times. Oh, God, it's awful. <laughs> um, and so I was going to a wedding. Um, and so I was driving through this and I got like super excited because it's like the mountain appears. There's been nothing but planes behind me. And I'm like, I'm going to be driving in the mountains soon and there'll be more, there'll be stuff to look at. and It'll be <laughs> interesting. And then I drove for like another 45 minutes and the mountain was still off in the distance. And it's like <laughs> so frustrating. And I couldn't help but think that this is what it's like to study for the MCAT. Yep. And it's because people are focused on the goal. Yeah. And this is a really common 
um, thing. Like focusing on the goal gets you in initially kind of like motivated and interested. And this doesn't matter what the goal is, right? Like I want to have a bodybuilder physique. I want to, you know, you know, be rich and famous. I mm. want to be a doctor and like master the MCAT and get into Harvard. Yep. Um, and so those things kind of like pull you in, but eventually it's like not enough to kind of like keep you going. And so, um, if, you know, in that kind of driving analogy, it felt like I hadn't moved in 45 minutes because the mountain was still there in the distance and I'm still driving through these plains. That's but what you I, were no, judging your success off of was right, right. getting was close to the mountain. Like, am I here or not? Yeah. But, you know, if I looked at the map and saw like how many miles I'd dr driven and how much closer I actually was, you know, all of a sudden it becomes a lot easier to deal with. Yep. And so um, this actually has something to do with leading and lagging measures, which is actually a business term. This is not anything that usually shows up in the science world. Okay. Um, but in the, the business world, you know, you're looking for, you know, getting, you know, increasing users uh, of your whatever your app is or mm -hmm. getting, you know, more sales or something. And those those are the goals. Those are the those are the things that you're looking for. Technically, those are the lagging measures. Those are the things that like that's the end result. And it's measurable. Like you can show something's happening, but like, what do you do today? Right. Like if I want to get people using my app, like measuring how many people using my app isn't really helping me stay motivated for what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. And so you need to kind of focus on the leading measures. The leading measures are what causes the lag measures. And so the lagging measures would be getting more users. Leading measures would be advertising. Um, so for the MCAT, instead of kind of looking at it like in the business term, the lagging measure is getting a good score in a section. Right. And if people are just focused on that, they'll end up getting burnt out and exhausted. Just like, you know, if you're focused on like, I want to have a bodybuilder physique, I can go to the gym every day. And if I look at myself in the mirror and my only goal is to have a bodybuilder physique, I'm going <laughs> to be disappointed and annoyed every day. Right. And I'm like, failure, day one, failure, yeah. day two, failure, day three. And, and I'm going to quit because I hate it because <laughs> right? yeah. it's not fun. Yeah. But if, if I, if I judge my success on, instead of, you know, the end goal on like the steps going forward. If my success is based on like, did I go to the gym today? Yes. Success. Yep. Right. Today was a success. And that kind of keeps you motivated. So it's kind of taking that big, ex that big exam and breaking it down into like, what do I need to do today to like move myself towards that lagging goal? Um, and so uh, did I spend an hour studying today? Did I do a car's passage today? If you did it, then you get that success. You get that dopamine rush. You get yep. the, the feedback loop where all of a sudden you're excited. So the next day you do it the same, just like going to the gym or, you know, running or something like that. If you're focused on the end goal instead of the process, um, you're always going to be disappointed. If you're focused on the process as the goal, then you're succeeding every time you make, a, you know, a, a step forward. Yeah, there's a great book that came out this year as we're recording this called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And that was the first book that really kind of hit home to me, the, the things that you're talking about. And for for instance, I, I've run two half marathons, I think. And mm -hmm. both times I was training for a half marathon, right? I was running to train for a half marathon. And as soon as the half marathon ended, guess what I did? I stopped running. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of, right, becoming a runner and mm -hmm. running a half marathon where I built into to my psyche, to my being that I am a runner. Uh, and therefore, as soon as the race is over, guess what? I'm still a runner because that's who I am and not what I'm doing. Uh, so it it just was the first time that really hit home that I'm like, oh, I get this now. Like I understand habits. And mm -hmm. now um, when when you're talking about the MCAT here, I think in, in, about this going, okay, if a student, because this is what they're going to need to do to make it through pre-med, to make it through the MCAT, to make it through medical school, to make it even through residency, because you're still doing a ton of, of studying mm -hmm. residency, you need to be a studier, not a MCAT test taker, right? right? So you need to build that into yourself that this is just something you do. I study every day. 
And today it may be for a chemistry test, tomorrow it may be for the MCAT, but it's just who I am. And if I'm studying every day, then it's successful. I'm not looking at that final score. Uh, obviously, you want to do well <laughs> every time, yeah. Um, but you're not looking at only taking the MCAT and getting that 520 as a sign of success. It's, it's studying every day as, as, as the sign of success. Yeah. And kind of taking joy in the process itself. A hundred percent. Where if I like at the end of the day, like I learned something cool, like being able to do that. Honestly, that's why I am where I am today is because I like to like at the end of the day, be like, I learned something awesome about magnets. I learned something (laughs) awesome about lava lamps, like how they work. Um, And so there's just kind of like things going on there and it makes you kind of excited. And, you know, if, if my goal is to you know, I, I just want to win Jeopardy and that's why I'm learning stuff all day. I'm going to be so sick and tired and I'm going to hate my life because there's other things that I can be doing. And it's the same thing with medicine and all of medicine is, like you said, a marathon. I know that you ran two half marathons, so I think you can just say you ran a marathon at this point. <laughs> no, nope, I will never say uh, that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm doing the same thing, uh, not with running, but with just kind of trying to be a healthier person. And so, you know, eating, eating different foods, you know, I'm eating a lot of like tilapia and broccoli and stuff like that. And so, you know, rather than trying to base it off of, you know, I you know have a super physique at the end of the day, I'm like, I did it. I ate my broccoli and uh, tilapia today. So that was a success. I had, I had broccoli and chicken for lunch. And there we go. Broccoli. I'm all about it. Fiber. Um, yeah. Now that being said, it, it is important. You know, most people are not going through this process because they want to be a studier at the end, right? Yeah. Everyone, everyone is glad when the MCAT is over, right? <laughs> the, when you're when you're kind of done with that, and so I, I think it's also this is something I noticed a lot in medical school, especially was. I would find myself getting kind of burnt out and I'm just like, ah, this is just like all day, every day. And I'm just kind of like losing interest. And, and then I would go shadow in the clinic and all of a sudden my drive and ambition would be back because I reminded mm-hmm. myself why I'm doing it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm not doing it because I want to be down in a cave studying all day with piles of books surrounding me. I'm yep. doing it because I want to be interacting with patients and helping them and making the world a healthier, better place. And so going into the clinic, you know, provided me with that motivation. Yep. And so it's important for students to, you know, not feel like, you know, that you have to chain yourself to your desk. Um, if there's something that makes you feel good and also is beneficial, do it, do it, do it all over the place. Yeah. Um, because that, you know, you, that kind of like reinforces and gets you reinvigorated for, for dealing with the whole process. Um, and that's something that every, every medical student I know, every resident is like, yeah, like first two years of med school, just kind of, you know, like in the cave studying all day. <laughs> I was and miserable. You, yeah. Everyone's miserable. And then all of a sudden you like, you go to the clinic, you know, once a month or whatever. And yeah. all of a sudden it's like, yeah, it's way nice. And so we had to go once every two weeks, but I was in there like <laughs> at least once a week, just nice. because otherwise I couldn't stay. Um, I couldn't stay motivated to kind of keep doing it. I'm like, Oh yeah, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing yeah. all this stuff. I don't like because I'm doing this thing. I do like I, I talked about, uh, I did a, uh, an Instagram live yesterday and, and said that ex- same exact thing. Somebody asked a question about MCAT burnout and staying motivated. And, and I always fall back on knowing your why and remembering your why. And when mm-hmm. I talk to students who are burning out of the MCAT, I, one of the first questions I ask is, when's the last time you got into the clinic? They, when's mm-hmm. the last time you shadowed? When's the last time you got some clinical experience? Because a lot of times what students do is they will get all of those hours up front and then mm-hmm. go, okay, I'm done with that. I'm going to go study for the MCAT now. And they, yeah, check they're, off that box. They, they check off the box. And so number one, it's a red flag because that's all they're doing. Uh, and it looks like they're checking off boxes. But number two, it it hurts them to study for the MCAT and not do the other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what, what happens in the long run is they become less and less productive because they're burning out. They're, they're hating what they're doing. When in reality, if they would have spent an hour, two hours, three hours on average, whatever, over, over the week outside of the MCAT, remembering their why, being busy and being around to other people and socializing, they would have come back to the MCAT much more energized, much more ready to go and, and be much more efficient in what they were studying to, to be able to get a better score and to be happier and everything else. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's because it's a marathon that the MCAT is a marathon. It's a, it's a, it's not something that you just kind of sprint through. And this is why, you know, we started off talking about how this is different than the other exams that you're dealing with. You know, you have an orgo exam coming up, you study for two weeks, it, you can muscle your way through that, mm. right? Like it's just a sprint, you, like just by forcing yourself to sit there and do it. Um, but that's like, if you have to do that, you know, every week for a year, all of a sudden you need to have a why, you, like, just like you're saying, you need to have something kind of reminding you of why you're doing it. Um, so I just really like the kind of like lagging leading measures. I remember hearing something about that, um, just kind of like reading a book and I'm like, hey, this this applies to the MCAT, um, just kind of breaking things down. Yeah. One of the one of the kind of memes or images that I always see online about being a pre-med is is the the like mountain climber uh, seeing mm-hmm. seeing the top of the the cliff that he's on or she, that she's on and, and and it's like okay I'm almost there I'm almost there I'm almost there and they get there and then they realize like oh crap that was just the first cliff <laughs> there's still yeah there's still more and and it's that that same thinking right of of going okay that's my goal and not enjoying every step of that cliff and going I'm I'm doing it I'm making it this is awesome yeah yeah and like. You're, you're absolutely right. And this is something that, you know, students tend to have like <laughs> very short vision when it comes to those sorts of things and myself included. Right. I'm thinking about just getting into college and then just, you know, getting into med school and then being in med school and like, uh, like all my friends are in residency now and they're just like, I'm studying all the time. And I'm like, weren't you studying all the time like a decade ago? And they're like, yep. Yeah, it's still going because most of my friends are MD, PhDs. So they're like in their 30s now and like <laughs> still still plodding along, trying to make progress. Um, but, you know, if you don't enjoy the process, you're not going to you're not going to make progress in it. Um, so another thing to kind of, you know, just kind of breaking things down into small subunits and having things you can kind of check off, having goals. We talked about um, like the last time we met, we talked about you know, the, the SEAL team analogy of like going in, I'm, I'm looking for certain things and I'm not paying attention to the rug. And so, you know, having those like little accomplishable tasks that you can check off and like each time you do it, you, you feel a little bit better. Um, and being able to, you know, kind of pat yourself on the back, give yourself a reward. Um, I was, <laughs> I was listening to somebody talking about, you know, they were writing their, um, their, uh, dissertation, Um, and, and they're like, you know, every time I write a page of my dissertation, I, I get to eat a donut and like, that's, that's my thing. And like this person gained a a fair amount of weight over a short period of time. Like how's, how's things going? He's like, well, I'm gaining a lot of weight, but, (laughs) um, making a lot of progress. And so, um, just kind of like having something there to kind of like feel good. I, I, not that I'm advocating that as a strategy, um, you know, that he finished his dissertation and then was able to. Um, you know, he had like nothing going on. So he like got in shape and now he's in better shape than I am. And I'm annoyed. Um, <laughs> but you know, he got to eat the donuts and he's in great shape and I'm just here <laughs> eating my tilapia and broccoli. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, tilapia is good for you. Okay. Yeah. Anything else that we haven't talked about as far as staying motivated or overcoming once you've, once you've hit a wall? You you did mention something about habits. Yeah. And I think that that's really important, just yeah. kind of developing those habits. Um, there's another book, I think it's just called Habits, that I'm a big fan of. Yeah, that um, was the the first habit book that that mm-hmm. I really liked. Um, I forget who wrote that one, but it's the yellow, the yellow with red mm-hmm. writing. Uh, he's he's yeah. written two books. Um, that's, that's a really good one as well. Yeah. And kind of the... Um, like they, they go into a fair amount of neuro in there, which is especially mm-hmm. interesting to me. Um, and there's a patient, I want to call him, I want to call him HW. I'm not sure if it's HW, a, it might be sounds, HW um, sounds familiar. It's the like yeah, Parkinson's or some dementia patient. Right. Yeah. He had a, Alzheimer's. A, it was a stroke and he lost, yeah. uh, he had anterograde amnesia. So he wasn't okay. able to learn new facts. Yeah. Right. And so he and his family moved to this like town in Arizona because the researchers in Arizona were like, Hey, we'll pay you if you move out here. And they were older. And so they're like, yeah, like the husband and wife were like, yeah, let's move to Arizona. They're going to pay us to move there. We want to move there anyway. I think they're from the North somewhere cold. And so it wasn't hard to convince them. But like, if you took him outside and said, which house is yours? he wouldn't know. He's like, I, I don't live here. I live in Massachusetts or wherever. And yeah. it seems kind of warm out. <laughs> uh, 
And but like him and his wife, they kind of developed these these habits where um, they'd get up in the morning, you know, they would eat breakfast. The the husband would go for a walk with the wife around the lake. They'd come back to their house. They'd walk inside. He'd sit down on the couch, turn on the TV, and she would, um, I don't know, do whatever she normally does. Um, but one morning she was sick, and so she stayed in bed. And so the husband got up, went for a walk around the lake, came back to the house, walked in the front door, sat down, and turned on the TV. This is like mind-blowing. Because if you took him outside and asked which house is yours, he says, I live in Massachusetts. <laughs> um, but he was able to do this because yep. it's kind of ingrained. And it's a subconscious thing. It's a different sort of memory. It's yep. things that people are not aware of because it's it's locked in a whole other region of the brain below the surface. And being aware of that and trying to develop those habits, yep. um, trying to you know understand the fact that this is going on, whether you try it try try to make it happen or not you're developing habits constantly yeah and so, even super as, complex things right the, the yeah. everyone has the story of of driving to work or driving to school going like i don't remember driving here i was off in la la land thinking about something else yeah yeah it's a procedural memory yep. rather than you know a, a normal like explicit memory and so it's just completely different and you know you kind of go through it um you know, we've kind of been talking about motivation. There's, you know, the kind of last thing that I really like to talk about. There's, I think it's a meme, um, like some video or, or picture I've seen. I've seen at some point talking about how it, it doesn't get easier, but you get better. And, and that just like resonates with me so much because there's so much stuff going out the MCAT and, you know, people go through it and, you know, it, the MCAT is never going to be easy, but every day you plug along a little bit, you get a little bit better. At the end of the day, you're going to look back and be like, oh, this cake, this test is a piece of cake. Now that might not be for a while, but eventually you'll be, you know, you'll be in um, med school, you'll be a physician, you'll be looking at some passage about kidneys and you're like, this is the easiest passage I've ever seen in my life. Um, at that point, you're probably a nephrologist. So, um, <laughs> yeah. All right. There you have it. Hopefully this has motivated you to stay motivated through the process. I get so many questions from students about how to stay motivated. And now I know that I can just send them to this episode. So if you have any fellow classmates, if you yourself are struggling, hopefully you can re-listen to this. Hopefully you can share this with your classmates to let them know how to get through the MCAT. It's a long, long journey. Again, go to nextsteptestprep.com. Check out everything they have to offer to help you on your MCAT journey as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode today. I look forward to speaking with you again next week where we talk about really something that's very important and that's self-awareness. We'll see you next time here on the MCAT Podcast. This is MedEd Media.